Right, hey everyone. So today I'm going to explain, it's kind of an uh, explanation of dehydration synthesis, but I'm going to do it in the form of an MCAT question to kind of show you the application of it. Um, and so today I'm going to talk about this question right here. And it says that the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. What is the formula for a polymer made up of 20 glucose molecules? Um, assume the polymer is linear. So today I'm going to give you an overview of this question, which will give you a great insight into the MCAT. But on top of that, I will also teach you about dehydration synthesis. Um, and obviously these are answer choices. I'm not even going to go into them because when you have a number this big, looking at the answer choices is just intimidating. So let's just move on. So recall our strategy. Our strategy is that Whenever you have something like this, when you have a number that's as big as 20, when you have a big number, you always want to turn it into a small number, okay? And that's only because dealing with big numbers on tests like the MCAT can be intimidating. So, you know, 20 glucose molecules is just overwhelming. Let's just assume it was three, because if we assume it was three, that will make it easier to deal with. And the concept that we get out of um, three glucose molecules can then be applied to 20 glucose molecules, right? So we have now turned 20 glucose molecules into three. But don't worry, that's not going to change anything. It's just going to make it easier to deal with this problem, okay? And with that being said, let's go into the aspect of how do glucose molecules come together, right? So let's say we even had three glucose molecules, which I'm drawing in the upper right-hand corner right now. If we had three glucose molecules, which I'm drawing like this, how do they come together? Because individually, they're just individual glucose molecules. The process by which they come together is actually called dehydration synthesis, which is a very, very important topic in um, biology and chemistry. Okay, What do I mean by dehydration synthesis? It's exactly what it sounds like. Look at the word, dehydrate. So D is obviously like out, right? Like if you desegregate something, you're removing the segregation. Similarly, if you dehydrate something, you're removing hydrate. And what is hydrate? It's water, okay? So dehydration literally means you're taking out water, right? So in this case, for dehydration synthesis, you have a monomer, right, like glucose. And let's say you have another monomer, which is also gonna be glucose. Then if you want those glucose molecules to come together and make a dimonomer of two glucose molecules, then let's just say, let's just call this two times glucose. If you want that to come together, then in the process, you have to lose a water molecule. And this is best exemplified by the picture at the bottom of the page. Dehydration synthesis is literally showing you how this, um, these, let's say, let's say this was glucose one and glucose two. If we want glucose one and glucose two to come together and form a bond, which in the case of glucose is called a glycosidic linkage, you'll see that you have to remove one water molecule. Okay, so you have to remove one water molecule to make a bond between two glucose molecules. So with that being said, dehydration synthesis is a very, very important topic. And in this context, we're talking about it in terms of glucose, but I also want you to know it applies to all macromolecules, right? So if you wanted two glucose molecules to come together to form multiple glucose mo molecules, right? You have to lose water, right? You have to lose water. And so dehydration synthesis applies to sugars in that sense. Similarly, if you had two amino acids, right? Like let's say you had amino acid one here and you had another amino acid two here. In the process of making a link between the two amino acids, you have to lose water, okay? Right, so this is, it also applies to amino acids. It doesn't just apply to sugars. Okay. Similarly, if you had nucleic acids and you want to put them together, that also requires dehydration synthesis. What do I mean by that? Right? Like you had guanine and you had cytosine and you wanted to bond them together. That guanine and cytosine can only be bound together if you lose a H2O. Okay. And last but not least, even fatty acids need to lose water to come together to form lipids. Okay. And that's what I'm meaning to say. All the polymers we have ever had on our planet, that's that's a very overwhelming statement, but most polymers that we've ever had are formed through dehydration synthesis, which means to create a bond, you have to lose a water molecule. That's why it's called dehydration. It's called synthesis because you're synthesizing a bond, right? Like if you refer to this amino acid example I have in the upper left corner, you're making this bond in between the amino acids. You're synthesizing that. But to synthesize that bond, you have to dehydrate the molecules, right? All right, with that being said, 
Let's go back to our original question. It said the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. What is the formula for a polymer made up of 20 glucose molecules? But remember, we changed that 20. We don't care about that 20. We changed it into a 3. So here, in my diagram, I have drawn three glucose molecules. Do you see that? Those are my hypothetical glucose molecules. And now, if you look right here at the bottom of the page, I have put those glucose molecules together, right? I've created a bond, right? If I had glucose molecule 1 here to create a bond with glucose molecule 2, and then I glucose molecule 2 had to create a bond with glucose molecule 3. So in the process of putting two glucose molecules together, how many water molecules do you use, do you use up? Well, you made two new bonds, right? Dehydration synthesis. So for every synthesis you do, you have to dehydrate something. And in this case, we did one synthesis and two synthesis. We made two new bonds. And therefore, we should lose two water molecules, right? Cool. So that concept, that concept of putting together three glucose molecules means we lose two water molecules. That's the essential concept here. That's something you do not want to forget. Okay, so in this case, putting together three glucose molecules made us lose two water molecules. So now we're going to apply that concept to the original problem. If we had to put together 20 glucose molecules into one line, how many water molecules would we lose? If we put three together, right, we had three, we had one, two, and three, and we put them together and we lost two, right, then how many will we lose if we have to put 20 together, right? Like if we had this repeated... I don't know, 20 times, how many water molecules would we lose? Um, you would actually lose, in this case, 19, right? We made three, if we put three glucose molecules together, we lose two water molecules. If we put 20 glucose molecules together, this is not a good drawing. If we put 20 glucose molecules together, which is right here, I'm going to draw this with a G in it. If we put 20 glucose molecules together, you lose 19 waters. So you lose 19 water. So now let's do the math, right? Let's do the math. What's our resulting formula going to be? When we started, we started with 20 glucose molecules. If you start with 20 glucose molecules, how many carbons will you have total? If you have 20 glucose molecules, then you'll have 20 times 6, right? Well, you'll have 120 carbons. How many hydrogens will you start with? You'll start with 20 times 12, which is 240 hydrogens. And how many oxygens will you start with? You'll start with 20 times 6 again, which is 120 oxygens. But that's just the formula of the starting material. That's 20 glucose molecules. But now we lose 19 waters because we made 19, 19 glycosidic linkages, 19 bonds between the glucose molecules. And in the process of making those 19 bonds, we lose 19 times how many hydrogens? So we lose 19 times two hydrogens for every water molecule. So we lose 38 hydrogens. And how many oxygens do we lose? We lose 19 oxygens, right? So now let's let's add this all up. So this is what we started with. If we look right here, look in the upper left-hand corner, we started with this many atoms. We started with 120 carbons, 240 hydrogens, and 120 oxygens. But then we lost 19 waters if we want to put those 20 molecules together. We lose 19 water molecules. So in the process, we have to do this math. We started with 120 carbons, 240 hydrogens, 120 oxygens. But then we lost, right? The water molecules are going to make us lose 38 hydrogens. So how many hydrogens will be left over? We'll have 202 hydrogens left over because you subtract 200, you have to subtract 38 from 240. Similarly, how many oxygens are left over? Well, now you lose 19 of the oxygens because this is responsible for the 19 H2Os. So if you lose 19 of the oxygens, then we have 101 oxygens left over. So our final formula for the molecule that's resulting is C120H2O2 and O101. This is our answer, okay? And uh, we're gonna now, we're, all we're gonna need to do is remember this. So let me copy it and bring it onto the next page. This was our predicted answer. Right, C120, H202, and O101. Which one matches that? D. D matches that perfectly. So the answer here is D. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, give me some feedback if you enjoyed this, if this helped make the concept of dehydration synthesis more clear. I really hope it did. Uh, and with that being said, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe, like, share. Uh, see you in the next one.